What is going on, you guys? It is Arkham Shiftry, a.k.a. your coach of the Philadelphia Flygons. And today, people, I am accompanied by the one, the only... Yeah, it's your boy, Jason. How's it going? <laughs> All right, so Jason is the coach of the Cincinnati Bengal Vangelos, and today we are going to go through a recap of our draft. Our draft was actually surprisingly really quick. Um, our first ever draft that me and Jason ever did uh, took, like, I think 10 days. I, th I think it was 10 days, honestly. But oh man, that was that was ridiculous. It, it really, it really was. It was ten days, but this was done in two hours. Not two hours, two days. Um, so uh, everyone picked honestly fairly well. Um, obviously, some people picked better than others, but all around, like people seem to see their weaknesses in these picks and kind of built around that like some people didn't do it as well as others but you could definitely see there's people in here that said okay this is gonna happen i need to get that person to um counteract that action um before we start off i just want to say i hate everybody who sniped me and <laughs> <laughs> you literally hate everybody okay okay so my, my my original game plan was i wanted mega venusaur okay mega venusaur is gone I'm like, okay Mega Slowbro. Mega Slowbro is gone. Okay? Alright, so it's okay. Maybe I'll go something fast. I'll get Mega Manectric. Okay? Mega Manectric's gone. Hmm. Now what? So, you know, you know, that that wasn't really fun. And then I kinda wanted um I wanted Don Fan and you you scooped him up and that kinda got me a little pewed. Um I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and then someone picked my Jolteon, which was my my one wasn't that really bad too. Because I couldn't get Ma Mega Man Electric. And then I also wanted <laughs> Infernape. And I didn't. So I mean. Infernape got swooped up too. Like a, a lot of the things that I wanted got swooped up. So this is a team that when I when I picked it when we get to it. That I'm not gonna lie to you, like really, really like wanting Gastrodon, but I made the mistake of saying it to Jake. <laughs> and I think that's why I, like I was talking to Jake and we were talking about RU and I let it slip because I knew he needed it, because I knew what he was drafting for. Oh so really? I like, I, I, I know why he drafted pretty much everything he drafted, but I'm going to save that for, you know, when he explains it to you during the coach interviews. And it's like, okay. like I was like, I was like, what am I going to do for RU? I'm like, I want Gastrodon. Like, even going into this, like, as soon as I saw, like, the RU tier, I was like, I want Gastrodon. It's just, it's too perfect for everything. And then, like, I made the mistake of telling him that I needed it, so he made sure he got it first because he knew he wouldn't get it if it went into the second round. And I was really upset. I almost threw a rock at him. It was started. That is true. Um, Gastron is actually really good in, in this format, as well as um, a Quagsire. Um, those two really fat. They're really fat, and they only have one weakness in grass. So if you don't have a grass type, you're kind of out of luck. Sidebar, sidebar. You know who is great in the OU meta who is surprisingly disappointing in this format is Talonflame, actually. I know, and that was a first-round pick, and I was I was I, so I was, shocked. Was Zach, Zach F, who took him? Yeah. And I was like, really? Round one? And I was like, oh, okay. And then there, like, was, then there was... Is it like, Talonflame goes round one, and Jirachi doesn't go... At all. At all. I was shocked. <laughs> I... Honestly, uh, I'm, I, as long as I don't get sniped again, I might snag that up later on with uh, the draft picks, uh, with uh, the, the exchanges. I might, depending on how I see it, because um, I don't know. But the the, the, the third OU mon that I would get rid of it um, kind of does some work. Um, you, you've experienced um, uh, uh, the Weavile before. Oh, Weavile. Yeah. Shady yeah, Penguin. Well, Shady Penguin actually experienced the Weavile. He wasn't very happy with me taunting his his toxic Gyarados. He. I mean, I, I am going to go out and I'm going to say you're welcome because if it wasn't for like the six losses I gave you in a All row, right. let me let me um, let me just say <laughs> let, let, let me just say those losses. Um, that was the beginning kind of my getting into the meta, and I put on a focus band and not a focus sash. I was like, well, what's the difference? Then I realized, oh, focus band's like only 10% of surviving a one-shot. So, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, like, I mean, I was, I was a couple months into the meta. Like, I mean, I, I picked up on meta, meta pretty fast. I've actually been out of the meta for, like, what, three or four months now? Me so, and you, like, me and you both. everything that I picked up on was just, like, speculation and things. I was going off of stats and versatility, so it's like, we'll get into that later. But, yeah, yeah. like, like that's, like, I've been out of the meta for so long. That's why I was, like, wanting to come back into the meta through NDS, because I was like, it's really not a meta format. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you have to prepare for off the stuff, so I'm like... It's more of it's right. more of um don't prepare for a tier. It's more of prepare for um 
anything. Like this gets you to to learn each and every single Pokemon's like uses. Like the, you don't you're not gonna see. Um, let's see. Let me. Let me you're not going to see a Hariyama in OU, but I, I drafted Hariyama for specific reasons, but I'll get, we'll get into that later. I, I definitely drafted Hariyama. I, I saw the picks. I, I wanted I wanted uh, something else, but I, I settled with Hariyama. But, yeah, like when you look into things like that, it's like with, with when you're in a standard OU format, it's like why use Hariyama when you can use... Conkelder. Uh, who hits harder. He's a little bit fatter, and he still has, you know, access to a little bit of priority. Yeah, he doesn't get the ball a bunch, but he still has the priority. He still has the guts ability, stuff like that. As to yeah. where, when you go, you know, three mons from each tier, and you have to use those mons. Like, you have to have exactly that many on your team at all times. It keeps it to where you have to use different things, and you have to come up with ways that aren't necessarily standard to the meta. It's, it's, it's more fun that way, honestly. Yeah, it really is. I, I enjoy the style of league. Hopefully, we get to finish this. Um... When we did the, our, our first like kind of practice um, draft league, um, the champion is actually in here. Uh, you made it to the playoffs, but w I'll get into that into when I when I interview at you actually. So right now, what I want to start off with is we're gonna go down the power ranking starting from rank sixteen to rank number one. I didn't rank myself, but I did rank Jason. Um, Jason That's ranked. Okay, I have you ranked at twelve. At twelve, that's fine because no, I. I'm that's sorry, nine. Nine. Okay, that's 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 yeah. better than I thought you were gonna rank me because I, I my my picks are very questionable. But we're gonna start at number sixteen. And number sixteen we have the Detroit Grand Bulls, aka Fernandez. Now the reason why um I kinda put him that at this low, I mean everyone picked really great. But looking at the Detroit Grand Bulls team, he he drafted Gliscor, Excadrill, Mega Diancy, Mandibuzz, Shuckle, Tornadus, Internet, Electros, Ambipom, Tyrantrum, Rotom Fan, Miss Magis, and Stoutland. Now I'm gonna put like graphics up of, of his team. Um, he has so many big weaknesses, and, uh, and they're very common weaknesses. And he has nothing to counteract those. Now, I mean, given Electros can learn Giga Drain, that is a thing. But that being said. That's the only thing that he can really counter with what he has. I mean, you have one, two, three, four. Four that get hit with super effective by water. Then you got one, two, three, four that get hit with um, ice. And then you got Gliscor who gets hit by times four to ice. And Hidden Power Ice drops that thing like a rock, no matter what. You can get a Hidden Power Ice from anything that's a good special hitter, that thing's done. But Yeah, I mean... I was looking at the same thing, like a lot of his weakness issues, like, yeah, he's got the ice weakness and he's got the mega Diancy and the uh, Tyrantrum to cover, but it's still like, that's not necessarily enough because when you look at the fact that you bring in, say, say he goes up against Rennie, Rennie brings the Mammoth Swine, all of a sudden, yeah, it completely that's... shuts down Tyrantrum, and then you've got... you got Mammoth Swine who, who can easily just EQ 90% of that team and then Ice Shard. Exactly, and then you know, even with extra drill, because don't get me wrong, like Gliscor, Excadrill, Mega Diancy, all great mons. But if you look at like Excadrill, it takes weaknesses to ground. It takes weaknesses to, you know, what I mean, it's just because of his common weaknesses that are everywhere. And it's not just it's not just ground because if you look, he's also got the Stoutland and he's got the Ambipom. He's got uh, I think that's I think that's the only yeah. He's got those fighting weaknesses, and it's like yeah, he's got the miss. He's got the miss. You know, for immunity, but at the same time, it's like, will that be enough? And I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad pick. Like, I mean, you can make this work. I just, I feel like he's at a severe disadvantage going into week one. He is, yeah. He, well, also, Tyrantrum's also week two fighting type because of he is rock. So you got three, you got, he's also got the, he's also got the, the rock or the fighting type. But so, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of holes in his, in his typing matches ups, but I mean, he's got some, a little bit of salvation. It just, I just feel like he's at a disadvantage. Yeah. I wouldn't worry as much with the fighting because he does have a lot of flying types. He has Tornadus, he has Mandibuzz, and he has Glasscore with, and Rotom Fan. Those are all can take the fighting hits. Not, well, Mandibuzz can take it perfectly fine. Mandibuzz takes anything perfectly fine, to be completely honest. <laughs> but <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, next up on the list, we have number 15. Do you want to, do you want to go over number 15? Uh, actually, yes. Give me one second. I got to pull it up. All right. That's <laughs> fine. But yeah, um, honestly, the short Grambles, uh, and Fernandez, they can, they can turn this around, uh, after week one and two with the drafts, but realizing the weaknesses that he has, he either needs to 
think of something cheeky or he needs to make some switches. And then that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I agree. And coming in at 15, we have the Geo Singe Twins, which are coached by Ryan Adams. Ryan Adams has the or the Geo Singe Twins, I'm sorry, Ryan, has the Azumarill, the Curum Black, the Latias, Mega Sceptile, Porygon 2, Darmanitan, Sigalith, Exploud, Clawitzer, Lapras, Meowstic, Maleform, and Sock. Yeah. Those, um, they're pretty good. Now, literally, I, I wish I was kidding. Right before um, he picked Sock, Sock was his final pick, I was messaging um, Rennie, and I said, I really want to see someone run a sturdy Sock with Endeavor. I really want to see that. And then, not even not even three picks later, Sock is, like, just swooped up. Weakness pile, C sturdy. I, like, it, it can happen. It's I'm telling I play, I have to, actually, I looked at my schedule, I have it all written down and everything, and I was looking at it, and I have to play Ryan twice, and I'm telling you, if he runs sturdy Endeavor Sock, I'm out. <laughs> Now, um, the thing with, um, the Geosense Twins and Ryan, they have a big fairy fighting weakness. You got the fighting weakness in Porygon 2, you got the fighting weakness in Exploud, in Lapras, and in Chiron Black. Now, I don't know how bulky Exploud is. I know everyone runs Exploud, uh, Choice Specs, Boom Burst. That's a given. Chiron Black is not the bulkiest. He's more of just, I'm gonna go out and attack. But... On the, the counterpart, Porygon 2 gets hit with um fighting, but he's also so fat. Plus, the Evio Light is just insane. And then you have Latias, who is like one of the most underrated clerics slash psychic walls in OU. No one really uses it, and it shocks me because for well, honestly, with that is like you have Latias who has almost. Just, just barely, like, better. I think it's not even that much of a difference between Latios and Latias as far as its fault. So, yeah. but the, the difference there is made up between, you know, attacking and defense. So it's like, when you have Latios, it's like, do you want to lose those, like, extra 10, 15 points in bulk just so you can hit a little bit harder and vice versa? And I think that's why you see Latias use a little bit less than you do Latios. But I just looked up Xblad's stats, and it looks like he has... His, his defensive stats are not great. Like, he's got a, a 63 base defense and a 73 okay. special defense, but his HP is actually base 104, which I did not know. That's interesting, yeah. Um, Because you most commonly see X-Cloud running Boom Burst, uh, of course, and Scrappy, which will honestly... Uh, scares me because of my Mega, because Scrappy Boom Burst is going to hit like a truck. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But he also has, like he, like you said, he has the Sigilith, which, I mean, yes, it is a one-trick pony, but it does that one trick so well to the point where um, way back in the day when me and you were, were in, in a group, I don't know if you're still in it, but um, it's pretty obvious that I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I was going for the chance. <laughs> no, no, no comment. That's, ne that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> uh, Renny. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Renny, where you at? Yeah, where, where you at, though? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I was going for the championship, and I brought Mandibuzz, and it was uh, it was a two versus one, two in my favor, and I stalled out the time clock against the Sigilith, because all it was doing was just roosting and cosmic power, but it couldn't do anything else, because Mandibuzz just was just dark, <laughs> and the only thing that I think knew was, was stored power. It, it was cosmic power, stored power, psycho shift, roost, and... I couldn't do anything to that because I didn't run uh, Punishment on it because I didn't see that coming, which I wish I ran Punishment on because I think we did run the Calcs and a Punishment after plus 6 did 163% at, at, on a slow roll, which is ridiculous. So the person that drafted um, uh, Mandibuzz, wow, I forgot the name for a second. Uh, yeah, run Punishment. Trust me, you won't regret it. <laughs> That's all I have to say. But yeah. Oh, it was Fern who, who got Mandibuzz. Yeah, uh, Fern. If, if that, I wouldn't lose Mandibuzz if I were you. If I were, if I was in your shoes and I had your team, I would keep Mandibuzz. But I mean, I might try to snag him from you. But <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come into your house while you're sleeping and take his Pokeball. Yeah, you should totally try to keep him on him. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Anyway, he has some good mons. Like you could, you could run the Clolter Expert Belt, the Ketchup, the, the Ketchup King over here when he's shiny. But, you know, he does have a big fairy weakness with Chiron Back, Latias, Sceptile, and Sock, which is... I'm, I'm, I'm looking at his team, and, like, I'm looking at his OU. Like, I don't remember where his order is. I'm pretty sure Ryan had a pretty good slot in uh, pretty much all rounds, unlike some people. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, but, like, like he, in his OU picks, I mean, they're they're great. I mean, you've got a Zoomerol who's 
arguably one of the most annoyingly powerful mons in the meta. And you've got Kieran Black, who is versatile either way, and he's strong and he's fast and it's ridiculous. you got Latias, who is, as we already said, bulky and quick and hits hard and all that. And then you get into his, his you know, his second round, and, and that's, you know, the, uh, the UU. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out with why Mega Sceptile. And I was looking at his team, and I'm like, I mean, that ice, that ice weakness is, is, is there. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. huge. It's there because you got the you got the ice weakness on Sigalith. You've got the ice weakness on Mega Sceptile times four. You've got the ice weakness on Latias. I'm just trying to figure like, so I'm looking at his 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 drafts and I, and I see the mate the, the the big thing that you hadn't said yet was that was that ice weakness. Which don't get me wrong, is covered well by Darmanitan yeah. and it, Sock it's, it's, too and Sock. But at the same time, it's like it's still present. Yeah. That's something if I were him, I would look out for it because because I'm telling you, when I see Mega Sceptile, I immediately think you know, I shard. I think yeah, because out it is just not happening unless you have a fun spark. fact. Fun fact. I don't know if you knew this. Sceptile and Mega Beedrill carry the same base speed. Do they really? Yes. So if if you have uh, you can speed tie with a Mega Beedrill, which is Chris. Chris can basically speed tie with that. But besides that, there's nothing much that's outspeeding him. I. Uh, let me look up his speed stat. Actually, I want to look that up because I think I think he might get outsped by Mega Alakazam. Honestly, I'll look that up as um. I, I'm pretty sorry. sure. I'm pretty sure. Full investment scarf, Jolteon still can hit him with that hard hitting HPI. Oh my god! If you're not running HPI on Jolteon, you get out. Just 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 leave. Just leave, just leave, just leave. I, I, think, I think with those pure electric types, if you're not running HP ice here, you're really doing yourself a, a, a disjustice because you're like... Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, when you look at, like, the three main, especially in this format, the three main, like, big big three electric types, you've got, obviously, we were literally just talking about it the other day. It's Jolteon, Mega Manetric, and Raikou. Yeah. And all of those are, they're just powerhouses. They're super fast. Some of them are more bulky than others. Uh, and then... You have the you know the, the the HP ice that comes through and it just does them so much help. Like I mean, with with the right investment or whatever, it, it completely okos you know a speed set and most 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 uh, you know lander is sets and it it just does so much work on those. And I I honestly like in a standard meta I don't see how you don't run HP ice on those at all times. Oh yeah. Even in even in this format, I mean, it, it, 99 percent of the time it's the better option to whatever else you're thinking about doing. That's true. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next person on the list, which is the real Merrill, which is coached by Gabriel. Um, I like his his team a lot. He picked Mega Venusaur, but <laughs> fortune <laughs> that. Was... <laughs> but here's the thing, he has like one of the biggest weaknesses to flying. All of his OU picks get completely bopped by flying. Now, that's not to say that he can completely change that around with Blastoise having Ice Beam, Sharpedo having Ice Fang, which we can see with the Life Orb protected the speed boost, M Magneton, who is fast as heck, and it, I, honestly, I didn't even think of it till now, it's better than using Magnazone. He has more speed than Magnazone, and he can have the Evio Light. Yep, he gets the Evio Light, which gives him that boost, which puts his defenses better. The only thing you're not getting with Magneton that you're getting with Magnazone is that that special attack boost. But yeah. honestly, like it, for, for the extra stats you get for him, it's worth it. Fun fact while we're talking about the real Maril. <laughs> if you look, the, the, the only times I got snipe sniped, honestly, for it was like times total, and he got me with Reuniclus. I was, I was yeah. on Reuniclus. I was like, I want it, I want it, I want it. And then he took it, and I almost cried. <laughs> well, like, yeah, and then he... Um, when you picked Dusk, you picked Dusk Noir. We'll get to, we'll get to that later. I was really confused. You said Dusk Noir. I'm like, why didn't he just go Dusk Clops? That's the better version of Dusk Noir. And then he picks Dusk Dusk Clops, and I was like, there it is. And um, Dusk Clops is is another. He has two Evio Light users, which is huge. I mean, once it's knocked off, they're not that bad. But if you run up against someone and you get rid of knockoff, you're golden. Those walls are gonna be a pain in the butt to take down. Fun fact: I was having a dilemma because I knew I was either gonna take. Dusk Lops or Dusk Noir, and I could not decide which one. 
And I was like running. I was like, you know, with Dust Clops, I have to run the EVLA. As to where with Dust Noir, I can do this or that. And then I thought about it, and I was, and I was looking at, you know, I was looking at tiers and stuff like that. And it said NFE, and I was trying to figure out because it didn't come up on my NU list because I was using Team Builder. Yeah. And I was like, well, I have to go to Dust Noir because I can't pick Dust Clops. And I went Dust Noir, and then I saw him pick Dust Clops. Like, uh- <laughs> and I was like, that was an option. Yeah. Honestly, I so honestly, I was so close to picking Mantike, but then I realized I already have a lot of water types on my team. And I'll tell you why I was going to pick Mantike. Um, I think with Evio Light, with Evio Light at level 50, it has like 320 something special defense. Wow, really? Yeah. There there's a battle that huh. Sh- that Shady takes on and uh, I think it's OU, he takes on a Mantike against a, a, a challenger and the Mantike just bops him. Like it's crazy cuz he's like why did this person bring a Mantike? Ice Beam, Scald, Air Slash, Rest. Dead serious. And it has Water Absorb, too, which is just huge. Dude, EV Light Man Pack, New Meta. It, it really, it's, it's great. So, I mean, yeah. Um, the Real Marl has a big, big, big flying weakness in his OU picks, but he makes up for it with Magneton, Sharpedo, Blast Toys that can all carry super effective damage and Carbink uh, to flying types. So that's Dude, he's even got the dodge ops, which yeah I did not see. Like I mean, Archeops is good at fifty percent plus health. I I think that's he I think needs that's another big... ability. He just Ar- Archeops needs another ability to make it like validated. Yeah, I think I think Game Freak needs to give him honestly a a hidden ability of some kind that is like maybe like something just lame or useless because Defiant. his stats are crazy. Like he's so good. Like by stat wise and his move pool, and then you just look at his ability, and that's the reason why Archeops is so yeah defeatist. The fetus is ridiculous. Like, simple, big, like everyday non super ability. I think that he'll be, you know, balanced out competitively. Just give him just give him defiant. Yeah, just give him defiant. That's all you gotta do. Exactly. Defiant where you can give him rivalry if you want. You True. I mean anything you know, even those kind of things, it's still useful. You know what or mean? overcoat. I, I, I can see him with overcoat. Yes, overcoat wouldn't be too bad, actually. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move on to the number 13 spot, which is the other co-host who did not make it. Um, we have the Hy- Hyrule Aegis Slash run by Chris. Um, Chris was, had a very unfortunate picking, honestly. He he wasn't here for the pick, so we, we had to skip him, unfortunately. Um, he was going through some personal problems. But he made some he made some picks. But what I have there's, right here, I had a few in there that were that, that pretty much no offense. You know, I love Chris to death. You know, no offense to him. He had a, the few like good good picks he got, or you know, kept him from the bottom of the list because he got certain things that were just just they they they, yeah. they helped him out a lot. You got Victini, Dragonite, who are great. Togekiss is questionable. Then you got Sableye, which is also great. Um. I don't know how I feel, but, like, Smeargle, obviously, when you see a Smeargle, you're going to be running Taunt. Like, you need to run Taunt. Um, besides that, like, he has, oh, I, I've written down, he's a weakness to Electric, but, like, he checks it easily with, um, Executar can take a hit. Um, frickin' Sable, I can take a hit. Uh, but, you, got, you know, you got people like Jellicent, uh, and Fletchlander, and Dragonite, after, you know, that scale is gone it's and togekiss that just don't want to take that um i will say i will say there is a little bit of an ice weakness but true. even then if you look at because night after the marvel scale i mean he's he's still kind of got his balk to him but it, you know it's not it's it's not enough to take you know stab ice after stab ice you know what i mean yeah but you know dragonite kind of rounds this team out pretty well in my opinion because i think he's so versatile you know what i mean even if you want to run the event special you can run the the weakness policy set you can run the lumberry set and that that marble scale just gives him the chance to set up and wreak havoc on your entire team and i i think that with that he kind of balances it out between you know it being you know what made or make his team and actually rounds his team out pretty that's well. that's as really funny though Togekiss, i'm sorry as, as far as togekiss goes I, uh, I have to disagree with you there. I think Togekiss is great, especially in this format, because it has its cleric abilities. It has its, you know, para flinch abilities, which is annoying, but yeah. super, super useful. I've been known to use it a time or two myself but with Togekiss. You know okay. what I mean? It's, I think that it's, it's, it's got access to defog. It's got the roost, you know, for it's got great HP. It's got decent special attack. I think Togekiss actually puts a pretty good stamp on Chris's team. I think, like, Chris's OU... 
you know what I mean, I think is not too bad. I it's not at all. I mean, that, you know, the double I. But other than that, you know what I mean, I think it's pretty solid. I think when you start getting into the lower uh, tiers, like the, are you and NU? Are you? I think that's that's where he kind of got hurt because, I mean, Smeargle, Fletchender, I mean, those are two, like, I mean, you know, Fletchender, does Fletchender still gets the Gale Wings, right? Yes, yes, he does. See, Fletchender's got the, the Gale Wings, and I think he's got a decent attack stat, but even then, you know, I mean, he's just super, he, he's, you know, he's, he's Talon Wing, he's Talon Flame, but smaller. This, this so is how I say it, right? Like, you got, you got, you got Flame, you got Talon Flame, who's like, you know, when you, when you go to, you know, a fast food restaurant, you got the large fry, and you got, you got Fletchender, who is just the medium fry, I mean, you, you, like, if you have the money, you, you, you can get your tail in flame, but you, you can be satisfied with the Fletchlander. Is exactly. It, it, do, it can do what you need it to do. I think if you run that Fletchlander, I think you have to have the band on it. I think, you know, the Choice Band, Gale Wings, just Brave Bird the Life Away is pretty much the only way the Fletchlander works. I think Smeargle is a, is, a, is, a, is a coin flip choice in a sense that Obviously, it has every stat, or it has access to every move in the game. But True. at the same time, it's when you see Smeargle, you say Taunt, or you say exactly, Mock, or you say, you know, I mean, it's any anything you can do to outspeed and KO that thing, you're probably going to see a Sash guaranteed. You want priority against it. It, it's just when you see Smeargle, you know what to do. And I think that's the problem with when you go with, with people who bring Smeargle is that like we know how to like no matter how you want to run it. We know what to do against it, and, and I think that kind of you know damages him. However, I mean to balance that, he does have the Sableye, and the Sableye kind of I mean you can taunt Sableye, but yeah, you, still you still have a problem there because he has Prankster, you know, taunt, so he can exactly. he could actually taunt you first. Exactly, if he if he that, that Prankster ability just you know if, if you carry a taunt user, he, if you switch a taunt, most taunt user is in on Sableye. Like any regular battler knows, you know the taunt's coming, and they can just Prankster out of it, or they can switch out, or whatever they want to yeah. do. So, honestly, I think that balances it out well. Uh, one of the picks I am actually I think is really really good on his part that flew under the radar was the Jellicent. Oh my God, I know. Oh my God, that thing. The the print the, 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 the it can. It's just, it's a great mod. I think that was a great pickup on him. It's the Pringles like, it's, mascot. It's it's what? The Pringles mascot. It is the Pringles mascot. I was thinking <laughs> about the other day. I was like, he picked him and I was like, I was wanting to look into Jellison's move pool and everything like that because I knew I'd be doing this video. So I was like, let me look into it. And I was looking at him and I was like, I was looking at his little picture on Smogon and I was like, <laughs> looks like a Pringles guy. <laughs> all right, and so. Went, oh, that, that's Pringles, so. All right, so, yeah, I mean, and then he also has the, the two, um, Shell Smash users, which is interesting. I like to see how he's going to use that. But moving on from that, we are 30 minutes deep. Oh my gosh, we, we talk a lot. <laughs> um, we're going to go on to number 12. We have my former co-worker, the New York Gibbles, a.k.a. Craig. Um, <laughs> Craig is... He's, he's fairly new to the metal, and, and that being said, for someone that's so new to, like competitive battling, he did some decent picks for someone that's just getting into it. I'm, I'm not gonna... His, his picks all the way up into, like, uh, round three of the, uh, in, like, like they were, I, I, I couldn't have even realized that, like, I didn't know until just now, but, like, I, I, I would have yeah. never known because, I mean, obviously he has Charizard and you can never go wrong with Charizard. Yeah, I mean, who, who the other one? I mean, I don't know. But... Uh, Hey, hey, hey! Watch I, yourself. No, but and then he's got the Skarmory, and we all know Skarmory is annoyingly awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. Going into Kingdra, and then Nitto King and Metagross, and then you got Spiritomb, Gallade, Slow King. He got the Electivire, he got regular Sceptile, and he got Rhydon. And honestly, he's got a decent team, man. He's got a nice build. He's got a decent core here. He's got he's got great attackers. He's got some defenders. He's got. Kingdra, who can be whatever you want him to be. You Crit got Brown. Nitto King, who can be. Yeah, you got you've got Nitto King, who you don't know. Like like obviously, ninety nine percent of the time you know it's Scarf, but you never know whether it's going to be physical or whether it's going to be special. And yeah, that can be you can make or break. And he's got Metagross, and honestly, like Metagross, I don't care what anyone says ever. Metagross should still be OU, not Mega or not. That thing is just it's super versatile. True. It's a it's a Panzer. It's ridiculous. I know. I I when I, when I so. When I left the metal, I came back a few weeks ago. I was doing I was doing the the showdown battles in front of my YouTube channel. Um, shameless plug right there, but um, 
Anyway, <laughs> um, I was looking at it. I'm like, where the heck is just the normal Metagross? I looked in the UU. I'm like, oh my god, all these like things from OU just dropped down. Like, what happened? But then, like, there was like I, was, I didn't see much. Like, I haven't like like got into it too depth. Like I said, I'm just recently getting back into the meta with uh, Smogon as well. And I was like, I was looking at like all kinds of. I'm like, so many things have dropped to UU. Like, yeah. so many things, and I'm like. And I'm looking at some of them, and I'm just like, I don't understand it. Like, Metagross, there's no reason why he should at any point be in UU. Like, he's just, he, he's broken in UU. <laughs> yeah. And like, his best checks are UU, and I don't, but hey, I don't, I don't run well, yeah. down. So. Moving on, like, to this, Chris, uh, Chris, wow. Craig has, like, some common weaknesses, but he can easily counter them. Like, he has his water weakness in Rhydon and Nidoking. And uh, Mega Charizard, but Mega Charizard's water weakness is just, like, null and void due to the drought. But you can easily counter those weaknesses with Slowking, Electivire, Sceptile. And then you see he has a fire weakness with Metagross and Sceptile, but then again, he can easily counter that with Kingdra. Um, he can counter that with Rhydon. He can carry that counter that with Slowking. Same thing with Electric types. He's got the Electric weakness in Charizard, Skarmory, and Slowking. Guess what? He can counter that with Motor Drive, Electivire. He can counter that with Lightning Rod, Rhydon. He and Nido King. He had like I don't know if he how well he planned this or this was just just the luck of the draw. His weaknesses, if he can plan correctly, he can easily capitalize on that. Exactly. I was looking at that. You know, with with the way he drafted, honestly, going into every game, he 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 can have as long as he you know builds the way he should. Or I shouldn't say should, but the in my opinion should. The, as long as he you know looks at his team and goes bring this instead of this, that instead of that. You I mean he can always have a new like setup to have a balanced team and it's, yeah, it, it's scary team really. Yeah, that, he's the one. He's one of the few teams that you don't know what he's going to bring because he can counter any like say say you bring Con Calder, okay, Sloking. Say you bring uh, Talonflame. Okay, that's fine. Rhydon. Like, he has so much that he can just bop. Like, Rhydon's special defense is, is booty, but he has the Eviolite. But guess what? If, if Like I said, the Talonflame, you're going to Brave Herd that thing? That thing has 180 base defense with Eviolite. That thing will literally, like, brush the dirt off of his shoulder and be like, okay, what, what are you going to do now? Nothing, because I'm going to Stone Edge you and you're just going to drop. Precisely. It's, it's, he's got a great, solid standpoint here. And I think that all in all, I think that he, as long as, you know, he keeps his course together and he keeps, you know, bringing things in a balanced manner, I think he's going to have a really good season. Yeah, me and you both. All right, so moving on to number uh, 11, we have the Toronto Star Raptors. I had to look down, I, I forgot who it was. So the Toronto, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the Toronto Star Raptors are run by Gerard. Now, the reason why I have him so low is mainly because of Tyranitar. Don't get me wrong. Tyranitar is amazing, but he doesn't have a sand team. And this is why Tyranitar can be great to a scarf. It can be fantastic. But, say someone brings their, their Excadrill, a.k.a. the Rambles. Guess what? You're screwed. Say someone brings Sandvale, say someone brings Sandvale Garchomp, guess what? You're screwed. It It's give or take, like, like then you have the, the buff on your side. The only thing that doesn't get buffed is his Steelix, his Escavalier, and the Blade. Everything else is, is yeah. taking unnecessary chip damage that you really don't need. And then say, like, someone like me who just goes for Will-O-Wisp and you switch out, that's even more chip damage that you don't want to take. But Tyrantar, in general, is a great Pokemon, but, like I said, it's a it's a double-bladed sword. Like, take take it for what you have. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, what I, was, I was just agreeing with what you were saying. I was, you know, you know, it's a great... I mean, when you think of, like, it increases what I think it's a special defense, right? Um... Yeah, I believe so, but that's why everyone runs Mach Punch, because Mach Punch all the time takes this thing out. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, with the, the, the dual weakness, the, the, the four times weakness to fighting really, really, really hurts Tyranitar in a sense. I think that that's what keeps Tyranitar, honestly, from being Ubers, is the fact that he does have that four times weakness. Yeah. And, and here's... It, the it, 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 I'm sorry? A simple, you know, it doesn't have to be a complete powerhouse. Just any basic... A physical mon can almost go a Tyranitar with any, you know, random uh, physical move. And 
I honestly think that that sandstorm is uh, an issue for his team because, like, yeah. like you said, there's only two other mods that don't get buffed by it. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. All right. So we're going to move on to the Windy City Glide Score. Now, honestly, I've played against CJ. See, that who's run, that's who runs it at Windy City Glide Score. Um, CJ, last time I played him and last time he drafted in, in a draft league, um, he, he didn't make the best picks. Now, in this draft league... His OU picks are phenomenal. They're insane. Oh my, I can't get over it. Megas is where Mew Keldeo. Whoever let him pick those three and didn't see those three Pokemon before he did, aka all 15 the rest of us, who, di who didn't see those other mons there, like Keldeo, were idiots. Keldeo is amazing. Like, like, and then he also has. Alright, let me just let me just say this. He has some. He has a huge, he has a big flying weakness. We'll, we'll go over that in a little bit, but you know he has Arcanine. Holy crap, Arcanine's amazing. I love Arcanine. But, love Arcanine. Yeah. So you got Megasaur, Mew, Keldeo. Okay. So what do you got here? You all the, that that core is kind of good. I mean, you're gonna go for a dark move. Guess what? Justified Keldeo. You're gonna go for an electric move. Okay. What you got in Scizor? If you're gonna go for you know a fire move, just go back on the Keldeo, and he, like, he can he can do that all day. And but then you got you know the flying weakness with Shaman, Venusaur, uh, and Keldeo, which is crazy. But then he has Raichu, and I think I don't know how how much. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was wrong, no worries. I, I said also the low putting that I remember he doesn't get the, the fighting type until he mega evolves. Yeah. Um, but, like, he has... He I, he, he, he picked Azelf, and when um, I used Azelf against you, it, it I wish I, I did it a little better, but I think you remember um, the move that kind of made you poop your pants, which was Skill Swap. Skill Swap is yeah. a great move. It's, but, like, I used it against Jason a while ago. Um, he had his... Yeah, his, his he had his Moxie Salamance out, and I knew Azelf was going down. I didn't want to get the Moxie boost, so I was like, okay, skill swap. So he got Levitate, I got Moxie. So basically, he had a useless ability, which was... Levitate. <laughs> I'm Levitator, it was awesome. Yeah, Rune fan. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, as long as Raichu is used correctly, I think CJ should do a lot better like for this for this league. Honestly, in my, in my honest opinion. That's just what I think. I mean, I think, I think that Raichu has, you know, obviously it's 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 R U for or it's in you for a reason. Yeah. I mean, but but if you look at him, he has he has the ability to you know use that to his advantage here. And I think Raichu was a solid, you know, I mean, he needed an electric type, and I think because he waited so long, you know, because I think Electivire went round one for. Are you? Yeah, it went. First. Yeah, I think I think Raichu. Actually, no, he was the one. Oh, that's right. See, that's what I didn't understand. And I'm gonna be honest right now. What's up? We were talking about electric types. We had the big debate between, like I said, the big three of you know electric yeah. types in this format. And you know, it came up. You know, he he commented on how much he loves Electivire, and I was like, well, I mean, he's a solid choice, especially in his tier. And then his tier came up, and he picked Raichu over him. I didn't understand, and then he seemed to get upset when Electivire got picked up by Craig. And I was like, but I don't understand. Didn't you just? He's like, I was, I was going to draft him. I'm like, well, I mean, I would pick Electivire personally over Raichu, but hey, maybe you have your own reasons for doing what you did, and we'll see how it works out for him. I, I think that, though, even that being said, I still think that Raichu is still a viable choice when you get down to that point. So I, I can understand why it would work out. As long as he runs it the way he should, he should be fine. Yeah. All right, so you you, you said what you ranked me at, which is number nine. So um, I'll, I'll let you take this one away, because I'm going to hear what you, what you have to say for, for this one. Okay, so, honestly, the main reason why I ranked you higher than you thought I would um, is the, the OU core you drafted one and two. Now, you and I, along with Corey and Vinny, had the, the disadvantage of being in the bottom four for OU, and that was like the worst time to be in the bottom, obviously. Very true. And, 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 and then we're going through, and obviously we were talking about certain things, and you said, yo, I think, I'm thinking about, you know, this got sniped and that got sniped. You just kept talking about how everything you wanted that round got sniped, and I was like, I feel bad for you, but I don't. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, we get to the point, and you say, okay, I think I'm going to do this. And I completely agreed with you. I think I thought that was a great choice. I still do. And the reason why I ranked you higher than you thought was this right here. It's the Chansey Mega Sableye Core. That is one of the most annoyingly dangerous <laughs> cores imaginable. Like, 
you got the magic bounce on Sableye, so you never have to worry about him getting status. You have the, the Chansey with the constant cleric ability, the constant regeneration. It's just it's just great. And then you topped it off with the Weavile in your OU pick, and, and you know how much I love Weavile. Weavile is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Weavile is a great mod. You know, he gets access to taunt. Has a, it's got a great speed stat. It's got a good, you know, it's got priority. It's got all kinds of things. And you get into UU, and I know that your Infernape got sniped, but honestly, me personally, I think you got the better, the better choice when you took Insay because I think Insay is it gets the Sacred Fire, fifty percent chance to burn higher True. damage. I mean, you get, you, it's get, it gets the extreme speed. It gets the bulldoze. You know what I mean? It. I think that Entei is arguably. I, I said it to you, and I'll say it now. I think Entei is one of, just like Metagross, the most under tiered Mons in the meta right now because Entei is just. He gets his move pool is great. His stats are he's just a great Mon. And then you've got the Milotic, and you know. I was going to take Milotic round one, but, you know, you're a good friend, so I let you have it. <laughs> and, and I honestly, I think Milotic is, especially in this format, especially in this format, Milotic is just so dangerous to deal with because you don't know if it's going to hit you with, you know, full special investment or if it's bulked out physically or defensively. It's just a great mon. Hashtag, oh, hashtag mirror coat. Hashtag mirror coat Milotic, I swear. But no, and then you've got, you know, you got the Crobat in, in, in UU, and, and Crobat himself is, you know, standalone regular OU meta is questionable, but in this one, you know, he, he's got the speed, he's got the bulk, the natural bulk, he's got the defog, he's got all this stuff. And then you get into, you know, your RU picks, and you picked up Amoongus. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, I can see it. Amoongus is a great, you know, it gets, it gets you know, it's, it's got some natural bulk to it, it's got, you know, some coverage to it, it's got all kinds of things. You got the Dreadedagon. Which, I mean, if you wanted to pick up a dragon, I feel like you could have talked to me about it first. We could have worked it out, but whatever. Okay, I'll tell you I'll tell you why I picked up Drodagon. Drodagon, I picked up for those Rotoms that have, um, you know, they, they float. So he has Mold Breaker. And then I saw, so, I saw someone draft Mega Agron. I don't like Filter. I don't like Filter at all. So, with Mold Breaker Earthquake, I think that would do some work. That's 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 my justification for that. Not, let me just let me just say that. Just about to say, I was just about to say the thing. Drudadigon. Drud, I can never pronounce his name right. Drudadigon. Drudadigon. Yeah, whatever. The twenty. You can you can just call him Reptar. That's what I'm gonna name him. I'm gonna call him <laughs> With the He he has a decent attack stat. He's got a, you know a decent amount of bulk to him. He gets access to superpower, which is great because superpower can cover a lot of things he has to worry about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like he's 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 dra he's mono dragon, so obviously ice is there. The superpower helps him. You know what I mean? He gets he gets access to stealth rock. He gets access to all kinds of things. He's greatly versatile. Plus, he's got like you said the mold breaker to help you out. And then you've got the arena trap Dust trio, <laughs> which I will say I understand it don't understand simultaneously because like with you, like with Dust trio, he's not fast. He does get access to sucker punch, and the priority is great, but he's not fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. It takes, it takes a lot of damage to anything that has the word ice in it. True. I mean, I, but the arena trap, though, you know, a great switch in, and it's a guaranteed, you know, KO. And I know, I don't know. You know what I mean? It, it, can, it can work out for you. Honestly, I think with Doug Trio, it just comes down to switching him in the right time. Yeah. And then we get down into any you, and I love your, uh, your first two picks. I, I talked to you about it earlier. We talked about it the other day when you picked it up. I talked to you about it when you were you know, thinking about it. Zeb Streak is I think is honestly one of my favorite fifth gen moms just off of like like I don't know why because the fifth gen is the most obviously like competitively viable generation so far oh, yeah. and honestly I think that Zeb you're cutting out of here buddy so um Trika, like I think that it should be probably are you I think it's Oh, I'm sorry what'd you say I said you, you you're cutting out so, so I didn't hear like the last like I think sentence or two Sorry about that. Uh, what I was saying was, I think that Streaka should honestly be bumped up to RU. It's just so fast. It's got a great move pool. It hits. It's, it's special. Is like well, like 105 or 115 or something like that. It's it's a great great mod to pick up. And then you went ahead and got the Hariyama. And like we talked about earlier, in this format, Hariyama can be devastating. It's got the guts. It's got the thick fat. It's got uh, what was the other one? Sheer What's force. Ability? I can, yeah, it's got sheer force. You know what I mean, it's got access to not one but two different priority moves. It's it's just, it's a great mod. 
and I don't know much about Lee, Lee Evany, and I was looking him up earlier, and, you know, even 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 that, you know, even with that, I mean, you've got the grass coverage, you've got the, it, it, it was just, I think you did exceptionally well in Inu. Okay, well, and I think Inu, and, I'm sorry? I so said, I think Inu and UU is where you really stepped your game up, especially having the chance to make a save like Roy, and that's why I put you where I did. Okay, so Lee Vanny, why I picked that is because, as you said, Doug Shree is not the fastest, um, Entei is kind of fast, and Drudagon's not fast at all, and Zeeb Striker can be faster. Levani, since um, something else got sniped from me, has a move called Sticky Web, and I really want to speed control this 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 draft. I want to speed control. Levani was my last hope for getting speed control, so that is like the main reason why I picked Levani. No, I totally understand that, and I was thinking about that, you know, just now, right? As I was thinking about, it, I was like, does does what? Well, I remember just talking about you wanting speed control. Because you were talking about taking my mascot. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to take him because not just, be, you know, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, not just because he was competitive, like, viable. I was going to take him just because he is my mascot. Like, I, I'm i that guy. I just want to make sure nobody can use him. And I don't remember who drafted him, but whoever it was, if he brings him to, to the match with me, I'm going to literally cuss him outside. I'm like, how dare you? Like, he'll win because I refuse to kill it. Okay, well, since we're speaking of that, Next on the list is the Chicago Cub Shoes, who, coincidentally enough, drafted Galvantula. <laughs> so, the Chicago Cub Shoes, they drafted Talonflame, Garchomp, Heracross, Galvantula, Nidoqueen, Espeon, and Jolteon. I hate you. Alma Mola, Durant, Jinx, Girder, and Muck. <laughs> um, um, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, God. I was in the middle of hitting my vape. When you said that you hated him, I lost it. That's <laughs> fine. I myself. Okay, so um, he has great speed. Like his speed and bulk is is phenomenal. Now, Town Flame pick one was was just very questionable. Um, but then he has you know he has Garchomp, he has Mega Heracross, he has Galvantula, all fast. And you got Nidoqueen, Queen who's fat. You got Espeon who's fat. You have Alma Mola who's fat. You got Durant who's fat. You got Girder who's fat. Got, like he has a, a nice mix of everything. But he has a really big weakness to psychic types. Um, Muck, Muck, Girder, Nido Queen, all drop. Like his lower. And it, he does have the hair across. Yeah. But because of how big his psychic type weakness is, I think that that might still not be. It may not be enough from time to time when you think about, you know. The revenge killer king that Alakazam is, and yeah. things of that. Nature. So I think he'll have you know problems to like, like Gardevoir, for example. I think Gardevoir just, just. I mean, he's gonna have a hell of a time against Gardevoir here, and I think that, you know, I think he'll be fine if he, if he, you know, conserves and uses Heracross in a conservative way against hard hitting psychic types. Yeah, true. Um, he can, he, he obviously can do it. Um, it's just it's like you, know, you gotta watch out for psychic. Um. Moving on to our number seven. Actually, I'm sorry. Number number eight. I skipped one. I skipped one. Number number eight. <laughs> the Atlanta. Before we move on. Before we move on. Fun fact. I am an idiot. Okay. okay. I have been playing Pokemon since it landed in the states in 1997, and I will tell you. 98. That I, well, whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> I was like, don't don't worry about it. Anyway. Um, and I've been playing since it came out. I've been, a, I, I just called called a Gen 1 my first, like, five weeks in the meta because I just kept using Gen 1 mods because I loved them so much. Like, <laughs> and I had, <laughs> up until when I was doing this, when I was going over the picks and everything, looking into how everybody drafted, I thought that Heracross was Gen 1. And he <laughs> is not. He is Gen 2. All so right. That that, that's kind of funny, actually. All right. So, number eight, we have the Atlanta Frokies, coached by Jake. Now, the Atlanta Frokies, um, they're, they're new to the draft league, as well as a lot of people are. And he, you know, he had um, he has a mixed bulk and speed. Um, he, can, he has a big fighting weakness, but he can counter that really easily. Um, with his three uh, like amazing mods, he has Thunderous, Clefable, Gengar. All those, who cares about the fighting weakness? But that being said, that needs to be addressed. Uh, he has the fighting weakness in Snorlax. He has the fighting weakness in his Mega Glalie. Um, ditto Regigigas. But then he has mons like Vivillon, or Vivian, however you want to pronounce it, uh, and Cresselia, and Gudra, 
and Gengar, Clefable, and, and Thunderous that just really don't care about fighting because of Gudra's, you know, gooey ability, and then Gengar just says, what's a fighting type? And Clefable and Thunderous and Viv Vivian just take it fine. Vivian, not so much. But then he... he I comment on really quick, when, since we're talking about weaknesses and things. Thunderous, Gudra, Gengar, uh, Gastrodon, Clefable, Typhlosion... All have access to immunity, whether it be through ability or typing. Every all that is six different mons with immunity, and it's I think all elemental stats are covered there. So I, I didn't even think of that. That's crazy. Yeah, he, has, he has let's see, he's got the 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 electric immunity and the ground immunity in Thunderous. He's got the dragon immunity in Clefable. He's got the normal fighting immunity in Game and Ground. Gudra and Ground. He's got the grass and Gudra. He's got the uh, the the. Electric Ground. again here in uh, Gastrodon. He's got the fire in the Flash Flyer Typhlosion. He has ground on Cresselia too. Yeah, he has ground on Cresselia too. He has so much immunity on this team that while it looks questionable, when you start breaking down what he can actually do on his team, it gets pretty dangerous. I, that's true. I didn't really think about that. But now that you, you point that out, now I see the bigger picture. And that's actually like terrifying. I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's horrifying. Because right. as long as he can read the obvious predictions, you're just boosting his team. That's true. All right. So moving on next, we have number six, which I think this is the most controversial team that we will ever talk about in this league right now, at the very moment. It is the Kalamazoo Kingdras run by Chris. And I say it's controversial because he has a rain team. And it is all rain. It is all, all rain. You got you got Tornadus, you got Ferrothorn, you got Polytoed, you got Mega Swampert, Tentacruel, Heliowisk. Size with Toad, Rotom Mo, Quillfish, Kabutops, and we'll start Ludi Holo. Holy Swift Swim. That's all I have to say. Is Holy Swift Swim. Yes. Like, Honestly, seriously. Can I point out really quick? We all knew what he was doing. Some of us. I didn't. I didn't catch on. Everybody else didn't figure it out until like RU and like me and Jake were talking about it sidebar, but I didn't really worry about it because I had a plan for it. You know what I mean? And we still let him get Ludicolo in the very last round. How did that happen? I don't even. I don't even know. I, I don't want to talk about it. But I mean, <laughs> um, honestly, his his team is hit or miss. Like 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 this is why it's controversial. If his Polytude gets knocked out. And like th there's an and he has something else that can set like rain. Yeah, you can set rain, but that's an unnecessary turn of rain that you need to set. That like is. Mega Charizard Y from Craig. If you bop that thing, and in that you have Sun, what is a rain team gonna do against Sun? Nothing. It can't do. It can't do. It's no longer permanent. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wish to go back. They make rain weather permanent again, so that we every OU meta team could just be rain teams and oh sun teams. God. But, <laughs> but no, like honestly, like with 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 it's it's a it's honestly it's a it's a body bag or a just it's a it's 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 it's, it's a situation where it either works greatly for him, you know what I mean? And yeah. He just controls the momentum beginning to end. Or he has to struggle back to back to back, trying to get the rain back up and things of that nature. Yeah. And I think there, there's, there's a, I think it's a good team for what he's going for. I think you know the things that he got in order to keep that you know rain team going is really really good. I also, however, would like to say that it also the problem that you have is that there's a lot of different you know solutions, like you were saying, to weather. You know, I mean, you've got abilities in drought, you know, sandstorm. Uh, what is it? Uh, or Hell. Break. You know, I mean, you've got, you've got, you know, Cloud 9, and then you've got just moves that can come through. Like, anybody, like, like most mons standard can run, you know, a, a elemental mons can run a, a weather move. Yeah. So, it's, it's a very, it's a very, it's, it's a very controversial team, as you said. I think that, you know, it's either, but, I mean, if he can work it out, he can work it out. I think, I think that if he can keep that Drizzle Toad alive. He does damage to anybody he plays against. Yeah, honestly, I would be I would have ranked him much higher if he got Manaphy with hydration and he could just tail glow and rest. Honestly, I would be so much more scared of that team if he had that. Exactly. If he had the Manaphy, I think that I would have probably put him at one or two, maybe three. Yeah. But because he doesn't have the Manaphy, it's a little bit easier to deal with. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, not not trying to take too much away from him because he does have, you know, the swift swimmers. He has the Gen One fossils. How you doing? Uh, with the <laughs> top, 
He's just got the Ludi Colo, and Ludi Colo is just the most annoying mod to deal with in the rain. And then, you know, he's got the Quillfish. He's got the Intimidate. He's got yeah. he's got a lot of really good things. He's got the uh, Tentacruel. He gets the Rain Dish, and it, it has access to Rapid Spin. He's got Fair Thorn. He gets the Rocks. He's got he's got a pretty decent course. Like, I, like, like you were saying, it's really controversial. If he can make it work and keep that Toad alive, I think he'll be fine. Uh, toad drops. He has a hard time climbing back at any point. So yeah. I, 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 I think he'll do okay. I battled Chris the timer too. I don't think I've ever battled him using a weather team though. Yeah, me but neither. I think he's a pretty competent battler, so I think he should be all right. Now, next, um, we have the Clifton Crawdon. Now, let me just say this real fast. Everyone who I have high on the list, I've either battled before or had some chemistry with, except for this guy. The Clifton Crawdon is like. He he commented on one of the one of the statuses when I made, you know, who wants to join this this league. So I thought he was gonna be like, you know, just a standard, you know, competitive quote unquote player. But Edwin picked so many good Pokemon. In my opinion, he has a really, really good OU core of fire, grass, water. And you got, you know, slow bro with regenerator, and you could throw a Rocky helmet on that thing. Oh my god. And then, you know, he kind I kind of lose him a little bit towards the end with Mega Banet, but he he made some pretty good picks. Like all around, he did great. Um, he can counter his weaknesses. Like you have Fire, guess what? Heatran. You have Water. Well, okay, Slow Bro. You have Grass. Okay, you just go back out to Heatran or Breloom. Uh, flying type, you can go out into Aerodactyl. You know, you you got you got. All right, Flying type, he kind of struggled with, but besides that. He does pretty well for himself in his picks overall. You got Slurpuff. Oh my god, I I, I totally glanced over that. Uh, really quick on two of his mods okay. that are, and I say this in a sensitive means to the fact that they are they, from on paper. You're like, unless you've actually played against them or seen them used, you're like, why? And then you like you've seen them used, and you're like, okay, those are the only ways those run, but still. Like it's like if you like all it is is a right switch and those the, those two mods that I want to comment on are Slurpuff and Cincino. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Because it's, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was gonna take Cincino over Drapion, and then he picked him up, and I was like, er. But the reason being is because Cincino is just it gets its it gets skill link, it's got stab to you know so many things, and then you've got Slurpuff and Slurpuff. Fun fact. Gets unburdened, and unburdened <laughs> is the most terrifying ability in the meta. I mean that. That's because, true. And and it, uh, fortunately, fortunately, your bigger powerhouses don't get it. But oh my god, I know. I know. Comes to expand unburdened. I literally, I used to run a dragon mono team in a page in a page that on a page that me and uh, Steve used to play on together a lot, <laughs> and. I knew nothing going into Slurp, uh, Slurp Up Battle. A friend of mine came in. He was like, hey, I want to battle you. I was like, all right, cool. He brings his team. And he brought a Slurp Up, and he said, I'm going to lose because I don't even know how to run this thing. I'm just going to go for it. And I said, okay, whatever. So I wasn't even worried about it. And then he belly drums, and I'm like, well, that's kind of dangerous. Maybe I should worry more about this. And then he's just outspeeding everything. He, oh, he outsped my, my, he, he my Scarf Salamence. He outsped all of this. And then I started looking into it, and I'm like, that unburdened. Is it's just even for mons that have like, you know, butter stats for speed, it still just does so much for them. And then the fact that the move pull that he gets, he gets access to the player of he gets the drain punch. Drain punch is the key to that mon. And I, I the problem is is that we all know what happens, what's gonna happen when we see Slurp up. The problem is if he starts, it doesn't stop. That's that's hundred percent true. Um but yeah, like like I said, he is a newcomer, one of the many newcomers. But I'm I, I'm honestly scared because I, I I saw him. I'm like, okay, he does have an intimidating name for, for the Clifton Crawdons. But then his is I look at his picks. I'm like, okay, so he's a new guy with with uh with all these people that I, I'm terrified of. Um, so basically, you have big shoes to fill, Edwin. That's all I have to say. You have pretty Edwin, big I'm shoes to fill. Him. My heart smiled when you drafted Arbok because I was I was thinking about doing it. Oh my god, month. I ran Arbok. There's there's a couple things that you can do. You can run Shed Skin, um, Coil over and over again, then rest with Chesto, and then you know risk it later on. Then you, you got Gunk Shot, and then you got Earthquake. But yeah, um, he, he he also gets access to Sucker Punch. I don't know yeah. if you knew that. Yeah, it's he he 
I love Arbok, and like, especially in his tier. Like in his tier, Arbok is a monster. Yeah, he is. Like, obviously, like if you're running an OU meta, you're not gonna bring an Arbok because um, Landorus. But yeah. you know, but in his tier, I love Arbok, and I cannot wait to see what he does with him. Yeah, very true. Very, very, very true. So we're gonna we're gonna move on. This is where um I was I was having a lot of trouble. So next our number our number five spot I think it's number five five four three or number four actually I'm I'm all sorts of cooked up. We have I'm sorry. Uh, nothing. Continue. We have um you. <laughs> Me? What? What? All right. So you are. Right, I, I I I put you put you this high because I, I know how you battle. I've battled you time and time again. You're you're a great battler. Your draft picks are really good. Like they're, they're amazing. You got Mega Charizard X. You got Raikou. And I realize we haven't been saying everyone's picks, but that's just for the t uh, sake of um saving time. But I'll the graphics will be up. But um. You have Mega Charizard X, you have Raikou, Tarakion, Donphan, Suicune, Lucario, Trevenant, Uxie, Drapion, Duskenwar, Leafion, which I, I, I still don't agree with, and Altaria. Um, you have, like, like some other people, a daunting weakness for ground. Um, Earthquake kind of does a number on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five Pokemon, but then, you know, like I told you earlier, you have Dusk Noir that eats it, you have Uxie that takes it, you have Trevenant that takes it, you have Altaria that takes it. Um, you have, you know, Donphan that can clear rocks and set rocks. You have, I think Uxie can clear rocks, too. Um, you, you have... Can set. I'm sorry? Uxie can set and clear. Okay, so you have that, too. You have the pain-splitting Dusk Noir, you have Trevenant who can harvest the day away... Now, if you had if you had Charizard Y and Trevenant, I would say okay, you're fine because Trevenant with Harvest just done, done. Um, you got Raikou, who is one of the best OU Volt Turners. Um, Terrakion, who can counter your Dark Weakness in Trevenant and Uxie, um, with you know Justified. And then you have Altaria, which I was confused of, but Altaria can do a lot of things. You can Dragon Dance, you can Cotton Guard, you can Double Edge, but that's Double Edge you only really see on Mega Altaria. But, I don't want to get too much into like certain things because I know you want to do the coach interview, so I'll, 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 I'll keep a little bit of mystery there, but what I will say is I have a few specific reasons for Altaria. Now, I, Altaria came out of the blue because I was looking through PU, and actually all of my NU picks were PU Mon. Two of my three were, too. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, you know, I actually like PU more than I like NU, but that's neither here nor there. But but I was looking at Altaria, and I went, I was running Altaria before Mega Altaria was a thing. Yeah. I know, I know the Flying Dragon type is still really, really dangerous, but its stat spread is balanced. It gets a great move full, minus the fact that it's, you know, flying stab is kind of horrible. But, yeah. you know what I mean? Other than that, it gets a great move full. It's so versatile. And, like, through most of my picks, I was just working on versatility. And that's that's what I was going for. And then I saw the earth. As soon as I started looking at my team afterward, I was like, wow, the ground is real. So. Yeah. I mean, if, if, you can, if you can work around that, I feel like you'll be perfectly fine. But, you know, like I said, you have a, a daunting weakness for that. And, um... I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that's noticed that. I'm pretty sure your week one opponent, who we will get to in a little bit, I'm pretty sure he noticed that as well. Um, next we have number three. I didn't, I didn't think that he was on a rank this high. He stayed quiet the entire draft. Honestly, he that he stayed quiet. He actually made his own table. He's he was keeping up with the table more than I was. I picked up on the table after you know I, I stole his table basically, but um he sat back. He wrote down everyone's picks, so he kind of has the advantage, which is why he's so high on his list. Like, we have the Dallas Star, he's run by Zach, and first of all, his OU picks are, in my opinion, one of the best OU picks I've seen. He has Landers T, Manaphy, and Sylveon. Holy that crap. round is so important, and it, Landorus is, in my opinion, OU and down. The best ground type you can draft. It has the times four to ice, but it's only got two weaknesses in ice and water, and yeah. it is just so, so 
dirty all the way around the board, whether you want to run the bulky rocks or you want to run the fast hard hitter. It doesn't matter what you do. Landorus is just a perfect first round pick. Yeah. And he can be fat, he can be fast. And that's why I noticed I, I just noticed this now. His draft picks from OU to RU, he has two fat mons and a fast mon. You got Landorus and Sylveon, who can both be fat of Manaphy. You have, and then, and then in Yu-Yu, you have two Fast Mons and a Fat Mon, and Infernape Roserade and Mega Aggron. Then you have two Fast Mons and a Fat Mon in, in Ryu. You have Sneasel and Scrafty. Sneasel was, was a good pick. I'll, I'll give him that one. And then Bronzong. And then in his, his NU picks, he has Mantine, who is a beast. I, like, he can actually take a Thunderbolt, depending on who it's from. Mes, Mesprit and Swellow. Swellow, Guts, Toxic Orb, done. That, that's, that was a great pick. Honestly... You know, he has great bulk, he has great setup mons, he has, you know, he has a small fire weakness in Bronzong, Mega Agron, and and uh, Roserade, but Mega Agron has filter, so, and then he can also counter it perfectly fine, and he has a fire weakness in Sneasel. He can counter it perfectly fine with Pokemon like Mantine, and then you got Pokemon like Landorus and Manaphy, who can take the, the fire hits and then, like, scald you back, earthquake you back, and just, just... It's basically if he's on offense, he will probably win the entire time. As long as long as he can stay on offense, I don't see him losing a lot. That's my yeah, honest I, opinion. I was looking at his team because I was looking at my schedule and I said I was like I had to play Dallas back to back. I'm like, damn it, Zach. So I'm looking <laughs> at his team and I'm like, if, 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 as soon as he takes, you know, the momentum, it's gonna be a, 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 an uphill struggle, man. To, oh to yeah, because he's. He's got such, you know, he's got he's got such balance and such, you know, core bulk as long as well as just some hard hitters. He's he, he's he's pretty well off. I think he's got a solid solid chance. Oh at, my god, yeah. At, at holding down a pretty pretty solid positive record. Yeah. Um I wouldn't be surprised to see him battle you or Chris or someone else. Like your your, your division's good, okay? Um he's in your division. That's why you're battling him twice. Yes, but yes, he <laughs> your 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 division is gonna be crazy. Uh, that's just in, in my perspective. I feel like your division's gonna be crazy. I'm just thankful that Corey and Rennie are in. Oh my god, you're not the you're not, you're, you are not the only one that said that to me. I've had I think two or three other people that said thank God one. All right, so they're both phenomenal and they're both obviously number two and number one on the draft pick for a reason. Um. They're both in there, so only one of them will be in the playoffs, which is huge for everybody else. It's one less, one less. I'm gonna get completely just trained <laughs> to worry yeah. about. I mean, I mean, obviously keeping, you know, trying to keep the focus where we're at on 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 Zach, not to not to derive because yeah. he does have an amazing team. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at that. I was like, I have to play these two because I because I I got the 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 divisions mixed up, but I was first looking at the schedule and I was like. I have to pay these two, not just week one and week two, but I have to do it again at some point. And then I looked at my schedule and I went, thank God. And then I looked at who was in and I saw Zach and I went, damn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his his team is really good. Bronzong is interesting. Bronzong sets up screens, sets up rocks. Bronzong can do a lot. Sneasel was a nice pick. I like Sneasel a lot. I'm a, Sneasel and Tyranitar, lar the Larvitar line and the Sneasel line are my favorite Pokemon of all time. Hands down. But he's got some really interesting picks that can do work. Um, I'm not gonna lie, Manaphy it was was huge. Landris was also huge. Like he, honestly, like I said, as long as he stays on offense, I don't see him losing a lot. And yeah, that's just my honest opinion. I could be completely wrong, but I think that he has a, a great balance in his team and and he's got the great he's got speed he's got bulk he's got offensive prowess he's just got he's got everything that a balanced team needs and i think he'll do really well for himself all right so number 2 we have Corey and the carolina coffins now i played him in a in a league before he i I feel bad for him because he's been in like i think five or six leagues and none of them have finished hopefully this league finishes i don't see why this league will not finish but his draft picks really give me a migraine. And I'm glad I don't have to play him unless he makes it to the playoffs because he's not in my conference. And same with Rennie. And you. And Chris. So I'm kind of happy that I don't need to play any of you till the playoffs. So must that. Be nice. I'm, so, I'm sorry? I said it must be nice because I have to go through all of them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, alright, Corey, um, 
I was really confused with his with his beginning picks, and then uh, I kind of see what he's doing. He has Mega Glade, Starmie, Bisharp, Umbreon, Rotom Heat, Cobalion, Tangruth, Cofagrigus, Aromatisse, Luxray, Malabar, and Cryganola. Now, he has two spinners. You got Starmie with Natural Cure, so if you want to try to status something, you can easily switch that out and switch it away. Guess what? That was a waste of a turn. He's got Rotom Heat, who's a fast turner, who can levitate. You have the Toxic Stall Umbreon. You have the the Pursuit Trapping Sucker Punching Bisharp. You got Mega Glade, who just hits like a truck. The Regenerating Tangrowth. He has, like, the perfect team of, of speed and bulk. And his Cough Egregious, he, he, he got his mascot, and his mascot... Works for him so well. When I played him, I, I drafted Mega Metagross last time. I think within turn three, he burned my Meta Megagross. Me, Me, Mega Metagross. Okay, I think turn three or turn four burns it. His he he had such a fat team that I couldn't because I was all offense. He literally sat back and just chipped away. Like he literally like he was he was in a rocking chair holding like an axe. I was the tree. He was just rocking back and forth just, like chip. Just over and over again, just like slowly doing it. I was just like, I, there's no way I can win this. Like, there's there's absolutely no way I can win this. He is a a phenomenal phenomenal battler, um, and you know he like he knows it. it. It's good to know that you're good. I mean, if I was good, I wish I would know it, but I'm not good, and I I do know that. But Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but um, see, one thing I am looking at, and this is the only thing I can see. Okay. You have Stormy, Bisharp, Umbreon, uh, Tangrowth, Malamar. Okay. Okay. And I believe I have to go double check, but I also believe Mega Glade. That's six out of his twelve Mons that do he has he has a very big bug type weakness. However, he yeah, does have the ability to you know work off of that because he has the Cryogonal and he has he has the Rotom. He he has a way you know to balance himself off of and check the bug weakness. However, it is there. That's very so, true. I mean, the, I mean, the Rotom Heat obviously deals with the bug weakness until you get to, you know, certain, you know, Volcarona, obviously. But, yeah. you know what I mean? For the most part, I mean... Volcarona would honestly, like, I, I forget who has Volcarona. I forget. Oh, my gosh. But Volcarona does a number on this team. And whoever has exactly. Volcarona, honestly, I'm going to tell you this. If you don't bring it, you're going to lose. That's all I have yep. to say. Corey yeah. is uh, should not be scoffed at. He should not be like underlooked. He he's he's good. Uh, his team's good. The uh, the real Maril Gabriel has Volcarona. Yeah, Gabriel. If you if you don't bring um Volcarona, you will lose. I can promise you that right now. That's that, that's not a, an opinion. That's a straight up fact. You will lose. He will dismantle you. I I've learned I, that firsthand. Both types are crucial yeah. against this team if you do not bring a solid bug type and honestly i i'm i feel bad for saying this because i like certain bug types i think bug is the for lack of better term weakest typing in in the game because you really don't have the 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 heavy like back-to-back -back hitters for, yeah. for for bug types like you do with say fairy types or like you do with dragon types or like you do with fighting types like honestly there's only so many bug types that are really really looked at as you know especially in the OU meta that are looked at as you know hard hitters but Volcarona in my opinion is the best bug type in the game it's broken it's just it's crazy good oh, yeah. and honestly if you like there's only a hand like I said there's only a handful of great bug types but you have to have him against this team. It's just you have to because yeah. other than that, like he's got everything else just locked down and he's just such a good player and he's got such a good balance of bulk and, and, and you know, and ability and all that. So it, the bug type weakness is the only problem I see in his mods. That's it. And, he's and still um, I just want to say, um, have fun. He's your first match. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I don't have a bug type. <laughs> um. All right, so we have last, but certainly not least. He's actually not last. He's he's first. We have Rennie and the New England Manectrix. Now, um, Hi. is my little brother. Let me just say, me and him have, I think, a crazy history. Um, when he first came into the scene, everyone was telling me. Well, when I first came into the scene, everyone's like, "Oh, uh, Rennie's really good. Rennie's really good." I'm like, Pff, Pff, "Yeah, okay. Uh, he's yeah. Oh, all right, all right. He he he's a flying gym leader. Pff, okay." 
I bopped him. I was like, he's he's nothing. He's nothing. <laughs> and then we we uh, we had a mono fighting, and I, I it was me and him in the in the finals. And I will never forget this. It was one of my, my, the funnest matches I've ever had. And it ended in zero zero. Uh, in in my favor from recoil. Um, I went for a brave bird on his Arceus with um <laughs> with Blaziken and the recoil dropped me. But it was a phenomenal battle. And then oh. and then I I think I beat him in another another mono. I've only beat I only beat him in mono. Everything else he literally looks at my team says okay I know what you're gonna do and just sl like not he, all right, Corey what he does he slowly dismantles me. Randy looks at my team says okay I know what I have to do. He walks in basically puts the gun to your head and says okay you're gonna suck the, the bullet out of this or you're done and he does it fast he will he will end you he will end you fast that's my thing and before we even get into his team now there's a lot of people in here that i've either not battled or don't remember battling like i said i've been out of the meta for a little while rennie is just he is honestly without any like bias because he's my friend or anything like that he is the greatest battler i've ever played against ever I've he's really good hundreds of people all around you know what i mean and rennie is i want to say by far but by a solid margin the best battler i've ever played he's great at predicting his team building is just it, it's it's insanity he's he's, he's he, he builds teams based on you know what he wants to do and he finds a way to force his will and his battle strategy on you every time He's just so good, and then you look at his team, and it just gets insane from there. Yeah, like, like he he's great. Like he, all right, him and Corey have like this tactic. All right, so uh, let me let me go back to Corey. Corey has the mentality. Well, not the mentality. He uh, the one time I played him, he has a play style where he will sit back, he will let you do the mistakes, he will let you make the mistakes, and he'll be like, okay, here's what you did wrong. I'm gonna show you why you did it wrong. Rennie walks in. He sets up the mistakes for you and lets you walk to it and says, okay, now that you're walking to it, I'm going to make you just suffer completely and utterly without without even batting an eyelash. He's more of like of, of the of the aggressive, you're done, where Corey is, is the more of passive, you're going to mess up yourself, I'm just going to capitalize on it. Where Like, like I said... There's a great contrast there between, you know, offensive and defense. You know what I mean? Yes. Rennie, Rennie, Rennie is one of those, like, I'm going to take the game to you and do what I want to you, and then it seems like Corey's more of the, you know, I'm going to sit back and I'm just going to capitalize on every mistake you make. Yeah. And, and both tactics work phenomenal for both of these people. They're they're smart battlers, they're smart drafters, they're, and going into Rennie's picks, he has Mega Manectric, his... his uh, <laughs> His mascot, so he stole that from me. His Rotom Wash and Scizor. All three of those are great turn core. Scizor's not a fast turn core, it's a slow turn core, which is still just as good as a fast turn. Then, like, he has Mamoswine with Thick Fat, uh, Hydreigon, another turner, and Gyarados, a second Intimidator. Then you go on to the clear. I'm sorry? He also gets access to Moxie. True, that is true. You got the clear body Reggie Steel, Meloetta, who has two different types, which will be interesting to fight. And you have Agron. And then his last three picks, which were insane. You have Quagsire, who is a wall breaker, Weezing, and Pyroar. All yeah. in all, we, 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 we talked about this before before this. We even aired this. And he has some weaknesses, but it really doesn't matter. Because when he sees trouble coming, he can easily just be like, okay. I, I know what you're going to try to do. It's not going to work, and here's why. Done. So, like, right. if you have, well, like, let's see, you got Weezing out. Okay, you're going to use a Psychic type. That's cute, because I can just bring out Scizor. Okay, you got a Fire type. That's really cute, because I can just bring out Gyarados. Like, there's, he has so much, like, I, 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 I'm i scared of it. Like, this isn't something that he normally runs, which scares me even more because normally he, he runs something completely different, minus yeah. um, Rotom Wash and um, Scizor. But, you know, it's just a with scary thing, team. Look at his team, and it's like, like with Corey, for example, and I, I hate to keep bouncing back and forth and not to take the thing off of, you know, you know, and I think this is honestly like the main reason why Rennie's draft picks alone have set him above in number one instead, in a decisive number one instead of number two. Yeah. Like a little balance area. It's like with Corey, yeah, he has a great draft team, but he does have that bug weakness that's there. As to where with Rennie's picks, there's no real, like, weakness that he cannot check and deal with. He has everything covered. He's got a great, great synergy to everything he picked up. Like, every Mon he picked up in a certain combination can work well together. He just, 
you know, and that coupled with, you know, how good of a battler he actually is, I just, he's just a problem. And it's, he, he, yeah. he literally on his worst day come through with this team and, you know, make a couple mistakes and bounce right back with one or two plays because it's just such a great team. It's a, he's a great player. He, 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 he honestly, like I said, uh, he, he just has the advantage here. And I think that it's obvious. And I think that's why we put him decisively at number one. And it wasn't more of an iffy kind of thing. And, Honestly, like I look at his team, and every time I look at it, I just my stomach gets nauseous. Like, oh my god, I know. Like, like you have, like, like you were saying, not to, not to, you know, be redundant, but you know, with the high dragon, it's arguably one of the scariest pseudos in the game. You've got Gyarados, who is so even with the four times weakness, is just he's just so versatile and so dangerous. You've got. Let me let me key on that four times weakness real fast. Let me let me cut you off. If he didn't send out Metric first, and he sent, he sent out Gyarados first, and you go for a Thunderbolt on that Gyarados, say, say you're like, okay, I'm just going to go for a Thunderbolt. Metric can easily switch in, take advantage of that Lightning Rod, now be at plus 1.5. Exactly. Let right. me just right. say that. And that goes right to what I was just saying. I mean, everything he has a weakness, and you're like, ha I got him. It's like, no, you don't, because here's this. And Rennie knows, I'm telling you, by the time week one, by the time he battles week one, He's going to know every single thing he can do with his team. And it's it's going to really be fun to watch slash terrifying to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, um, he, he's a great battler, hands down. I've I've seen him in seasonals. Um, I don't think there's been one seasonal that I've seen that he hasn't ranked in the top three. He's 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 a veteran in, in the in, into the, you know, the the, the tiers. He's, he's he's a vet, hands down. Um, he's just phenomenal. So I think we should wrap this up. We're, we've been here almost an hour and a half now. But before we leave, I want to ask you: Who do you think is going to shock you the most in this in this season? Who do you think is, is going to do better than what we than what we kind of said? So kind of going back. I tell you what. Um, I actually have two two for that. Okay. The first one I kind of touched on it a little bit already. I think the Atlanta Frogies have an advantage that people are not really ready for. Okay. You know what I mean, maybe it's biased because I kind of know where he was going when he was drafting and why he did what he did. You know what I mean? I played Jake. I mean, I grew up playing Jake, so yeah. I know everything, how he likes to do things. But I look at his team and I just go, they are not ready for what he's getting ready to do. He did have that one questionable. I, I, I honestly, I called him later and I was I was making, I was messing with him about picking up, you know, Reggie Gigas in the 11th round. Okay. Reggie Gigas could be good. But slow start. That's all I have to say. Whoever whoever just said, and oh, I, well, I have an idea. I explained this to him, and the problem with Reggie Gigas is that when you half his attack and his speed, okay? For five turns. For five turns, and it gets reset every time he has to switch out and come back in, he will be dead before that slow turn can go yeah. off. Because hitting Reggie Gigas is hard. It's not letting, if you see Reggie Gigas on his team, Automatically, you know I have to kill that thing before five turns is up. And, and he's not honestly, the five turns off. Pokemon don't live five turns normally unless you're you're already set up. Exactly. It, Pokemon so is a fast-paced game. Like if it was like something more slow-paced, then yeah, he would be so much better. But whoever made uh, slow start five turns and like if it was three turns, he'd probably be a little bit better. But I'm not gonna lie to you. If he was slow turn, or if, if if slow start was three turns instead, he would probably be closer to R U or U U. But because it's those five terms, and yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, Gigas, his stats are crazy. Like, he's a great mod. Yeah, just but whoever made him, slow start in a building needs to be kicked on the balls. Is that he can he can still eat those hits that he would eat anyway. The problem is, is he cannot fire back. Yeah. His hands are tied until that five turns up. But I honestly, I think that Jake is one of the main people who are going to have that awe factor when he comes in. And the next person who I think will have it is you, sir. I think really? that with that Chansey, yeah, I'm serious. That that Chansey Mega Sableye core, along with having, you know, Melodic in the back and having the ability to, you know, come through and you have your volts and you have your speed control and you have Weavile. And, you, you, I mean, you, you Weavile is your favorite mod. You learned how to use it because of it. You know I mean, you are you have a dangerous team. And once you figure that out and figure out exactly what you want to do, you, I, I think that you will do much better than you're expecting. Okay, so I, I'm just going to go with two as well. Um, honestly, I'm going to go with Craig and the New York Gibbles on this one. Um, like I said, he you know he can counter his, his, his weaknesses if he plans correctly. Now, he's, he's new. He's not as experienced as, say, Rennie or anyone else that's, that's higher up that, that made those picks. But for someone who's fairly new, he, he could 
do something later in the season. Like, he could go through a drastic change where he learns, okay, well, I know what I did in this game, I know why it didn't work. If he can pick up on what doesn't work, and he can change that so it does work, He, I feel like he could do a lot better. I feel like he might be... I, Honest opinion, in his league, his division, I think he might get to the doorstep, if not to the playoffs. And um, that's just my personal opinion. Other than that, another person that I think we're really kind of overlooking... Um, <sighs> this is tough. I mean, I want to go with, you know... The Windy City, CJ in the Windy City, uh, glass score. He, he has a big flying weakness. Um, so there's that. I mean, but I if, can see where he's going with that from, if, because he does have, other than his big flying weakness, like, other than that, like, he has a solid team. Yeah, like, like I said, he's got, you know, Mew, Keldeo, Mega Scizor. All great Pokemon, all just all around, just phenomenal. So, I mean, you, we, we won't know what will happen until it happens. Um, I'll be doing weekly updates. Uh, well, not weekly updates. I won't, I won't go through every single person's, like, battles, like, in depth. But we'll be doing weekly re recaps, like, um, upsets of the week, you know, plays of the week, stuff like that. Just to keep everyone up to date. Keep it int uh, burp. I'm sorry. Um, keep it interesting. Keep it fun. Um, you know, but... I feel like this wraps up. We, we had a good hour and a half of, of talking because you know we're me and me and you are kind of dating. We don't want to tell anyone that yet, but shh. Kind of, we're kind of we're kind of in a relationship. Don't tell my girlfriend. Uh, I won't tell mine. It's okay. But um, yeah. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she watches this. That'd be funny. But um, yeah. Just so. Watching the way to this <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I feel like this is gonna be a crazy season. Anything can happen. I want to wish everyone who listened to all this, thank you for listening to the entire thing and not just your little bit. That means, you know, you're a trooper. Um, good luck to everybody in, in this league right now. Um, whoever takes home the NDS um, Stantler Cup, congratulations to you, whoever it may be. Um, I just want to have fun, and I'm pretty sure everyone else wants to have fun. So let's make this memorable. Let's make some friendships. Let's not be salty, even though I was salty in the draft. But that's that's in the past now. Um I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I can't make that promise because I'm kind of the, the <laughs> angry the angry trainers and the saltiest of the salt. So It's okay. So any any closing remarks, Jason, before uh, before we I sign off? To myself, cussing out everyone in this league at some point. Never to their face. I'm a Facebook warrior talking crap in real life. It's scary. <laughs> but, but at some point, to myself, I will be cussing you out. It's not your fault, except it is. Okay, that's uh, fair enough. But no, all, all in all, I think I think we have a you know a solid solid amount of teams, and I think anything can happen. I think it's going to be a great season, and I'm really excited to see what happens, man. Yeah, all right. So we will be back to you next week. Maybe Jason will come back if he wants to. Uh, it would be near and dear to our hearts if he came back. He's he's a beautiful human being. Maybe Chris can join us too. But until that happens, if you guys you know like this video, let me know. You guys can PM me. We'll have fun. Maybe I'll upload it to the YouTube's. If I upload it to the YouTube's and you guys enjoyed this, you can share them up or down. Share this around. Give me some love. Give give the league some love. And until next time, guys, I will catch you guys later. Bye bye. <laughs>